Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a build that I am super excited to show you. This is a 65mm 1S Whoop that I built and it has high definition digital FPV with the HD0 system. You heard me, 1S battery, 65mm frame, and it has HD0. It weighs in at just 24.8 grams. So as far as I know, that makes this the smallest and lightest drone anywhere in the world today with high definition, low latency digital FPV. If you come up with something lighter, that's awesome. I'd love to hear about it down in the comments section below, but this is what I came up with and I really like it. I wanna show you how I built this, but first check this out. I've literally wanted to build something like this for years. Uh, I got into Whoops back in 2017, and this was one of my favorite Whoops back then. I took this to races, I flew it around the house immediately. I loved Whoops because of all the things that they can do, and I loved hanging out with the community and doing races together and stuff, it was awesome. But the video was so bad. Like if you got through a race and you could actually see everything in the race, that was a good day. So back then, me and my friends were asking, how long before we can have this? a 65 millimeter 1S build, but with high definition digital FPV. Well, I'm happy to say that the time is now because this is a 65 millimeter 1S whoop. This new build is literally lighter than this brushed analog build that I had before, and it's better in pretty much every way. I set up some gates all over my basement, and in just a minute, I'm gonna race this around, push it as hard as I can and see just what it can do. But first, let's back up. I wanna show you how we got to this point. All right, here it is. This is the new component that's gonna make this particular build possible. It's a video transmitter for the HD0 system, and for the first time, this one can take a 1S voltage for the input. That means it's gonna take that 1S voltage and it's gonna step it up to get the voltage that it needs. Uh, previously, all of the HD0 transmitters had to take 2S or higher, and then they would step it down. So this is the first one that could ever be used on a 1S build, and I am super excited about that. Uh, DJI is the same way, by the way. DJI also needs 2S, so it's the first time putting any digital FPV system in a 1S Whoop. I have to stress that the board that I have is an early prototype. They sent it to me for testing. And so the final product, whenever that comes out, it might be different. It might have different specs. It might look different. Uh, take that into account. I can only show you what I have here. Hey, Nate from the future here. I just wanna let you know that I had a conversation with Carl over at DiviMath and I gave him some suggestions about the 1S video transmitter and he is so good about listening to the community and taking suggestions. So some of those changes will be in the final version. In this video, you'll see me cutting into the frame to make the video transmitter fit in there, but I don't think you'll have to do that on the final version. It'll be even easier and it will be lighter than the one that I have here. So that's awesome. Big thanks to Carl. The other thing that makes this different is that they've made the PCB a little bit thinner than before. It's 1.25 millimeters thick. Previously, they had a two millimeter board. Now, a thinner board is gonna be lighter. It's also gonna be more fragile. You would not want this board to flex, but hopefully it'll be safe enough inside of a whoop frame, and that is gonna save us a little bit of weight. So this video transmitter is coming in at about 4.66 grams, and I believe that's about 0.8 grams lighter than the previous uh, 2S version of this board. And that may not sound like a lot to you, but every fraction of a gram is gonna matter on a 65 millimeter 1S whoop, so that's a big deal to me. I'd love to use the HD0 Nano camera like I did in this 85 millimeter whoop because it's so good. Uh, if you haven't seen that camera or you haven't seen this whoop, I released an updated video about both of these things recently, so you could check that out. But yeah, this camera is really good, but I don't have any more of them that aren't already in a build. So the camera I'm gonna use is the Runcam Nano HD, but I have made an upgrade. This is a glass lens. It's the 7G glass lens from the Baby Rattel. So this camera with the glass lens comes in at 3.55 grams. I'm planning to use this Beta FPV flight controller with Express LRS built in. I've already removed the motor plugs. I have not removed this wire yet. I'll make some customizations there, but the way it is, it's 3.7 grams about. And then for motors, I'm thinking to use these 0802 19,000 kV motors from Happy Model. Uh, they're pretty light, 1.68 grams without any plugs. Now, the tricky question for me is going to be to decide exactly how I want to cram this video transmitter and a flight controller into a 65 millimeter 1S whoop frame. Uh, that is going to be a tight fit. The most obvious choice would be to put the flight controller where it normally goes and then stack the video transmitter on top. And you can see that's what they did with the HD0. 2S bind and fly whoop. 
The video transmitter is right here on top of some tall grommets and it's kind of spaced so that there's room between the boards. So that could work. I could do something similar. For example, this is the Meteor 65 Pro frame. I could put the flight controller in there, put some spacers, put this right on top. Unfortunately, you can see it's gonna overhang the ducts a little bit. The Express LRS antenna is gonna limit how close I can put those together. And the profile of it is gonna be kind of sticking up and then you're gonna have the camera on top of that. It's not gonna look natural like a traditional Whoop. And so for me, I would like to get that profile as low as I possibly can. So if it is at all possible, my goal is to do exactly what I did in this Shutterbug 85 with HD Zero. And that's to put the video transmitter right where the flight controller would normally go. So it's below the level of the frame and then put the flight controller on the bottom. Uh, but that's gonna be tricky to do in a 65 millimeter Whoop frame. After much consideration, the frame I've decided to use is actually this one. Uh, this may look familiar to some of you. Some of you have probably never seen it before because they don't make these anymore. This was called the Beta 65 Pro version three frame. It's the frame that Beta FPV made before they made the Meteor 65 frame. And this frame was probably the toughest Whoop frame ever made. Uh, the Meteor 65 was lighter, so it has better performance in that respect, but this one was super tough. And one thing that was weird about this particular frame is that the battery compartment was really low. If you set it down, it actually sits on the battery and it can kind of tip either way. I like the way the Meteor frames and other newer frames let them sit on the motor posts and you don't waste extra space down here. But hey, in this particular occasion, having extra space underneath is actually really nice. I can have the USB here and it just barely does not block the battery. I'm gonna be able to have a really short power lead on the back here, which is what I like. And the frame is just a tiny bit taller than usual. And so I think that's gonna give enough room for that Express LRS antenna. I've already cut out the notches for the video transmitter to sit on top and the whole thing is gonna look just like that. I went ahead and wired the boards to each other so I could do a quick test of the video before I put it into the frame. So you've got the MIPI cable here. This is a monopole antenna that I just made. It's just a, a UFL extension wire that I trimmed down. The exposed part is the important part and that's 12.92 millimeters or one quarter wavelength. Uh, power comes down here. I'm running the board directly off of 1S VBAT. So the red and black wires are connected onto the top side of the battery leads and these other little wires go up to the front. That's gonna be for R1 and T1, which is gonna transmit data between the two boards. That's important for the canvas mode OSD. So in theory, if I plug it in right now, we should have video. There we go, is it recording? Looks like it is, you can see my messy desktop. All right, let's build this thing up. Here it is all put together, and I don't know about you, but I think it looks pretty sweet. If you looked at it from the front or the back, like you wouldn't even think this is a Whoop with digital FPV, but it totally is, and that's part I was going for. So I think it turned out really well. The big question is gonna be weight. My goal for this build was to stay under 25 grams dry weight, and we're coming out to 24.8, awesome. And if I take a 250 million power 1S battery and stick it in there, that's a flying weight of under 32 grams. But this one, this is the real comparison for me personally. This is my old brushed Whoop racer, and I love this thing. I flew it around the house, I took it to races, I won a lot of races with this. It had seven by 16 millimeter motors, which was my favorite for brushed. I started with 615s and then upgraded to these. So I love this drone and I flew it a lot. And this is the drone that I had when me and my friends were asking the question, you know, how long before we can have high definition FPV in something like this? And this one came in just over 25 grams. So my new one with HD Zero is in fact lighter and it's the same size. It's got brushless motors and years of other advancements on it. And so I'm excited to try this out. Let me go set up beta flight and then we can do a quick hover test. All right, here we go. Motors armed, I'm gonna punch out. <laughs> oh, all right, let me do that again. Here we go, punch. And punch. That's pretty good. Part of the not quite as high as what I'm used to flying today, but pretty sure this is better than any of those brush boots that I had. If you enjoy the content on my channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. I would sure appreciate that. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you some more details about how I put this together. But first, let me throw up some gates. It's time to have some fun with this and find out what it can really do. <laughs>
Man, flying this in the house is totally a blast. Uh, it's tiny, it fits through just about any gap, it's relatively quiet and safe, and the video quality is so nice compared to the analog FPV that we're all used to flying on Whoops. I still love those analog builds, don't get me wrong, and this one is a few grams heavier, which I can feel when I'm flying, but it's still a lot of fun, and I love that this is possible. I like the direction it's going. I hope the technology continues to improve to make builds like this even lighter and therefore even better in the future. Right now I'm getting about three minutes of flight time on a 300 million power battery like this. I've tried these three blade Aussie props. Uh, they work great, although I had to drill them out to fit them on here. I don't know why they're so tight. I also tried these four blade gem fan props and I think I like these props better for this particular motor because it's 19,000 kV. And I feel like that's actually on the low end for this build for racing. 20,000 or 22,000 might actually give it a little bit more oomph. Hopefully you'd still have enough battery life for a race, but I haven't tried that combination yet. As you can see, I'm holding the camera with a 3D printed canopy. And I like to use these canopies for whoop racers because uh, they're pretty light, they're totally indestructible, and I can get quite a bit of up tilt. Uh, if you're interested in this canopy, I'll put an STL file link down in the video description. In fact, I'll put links to all of these parts if that helps you out. In this case, this canopy didn't really work out ideal. Uh, this 14 by 14 millimeter camera is larger than the whoop cameras that I usually use with this canopy and you can see it does get pretty close to the VTX. Uh, I should probably put some foam in between the two. For now I've just got the MIPI cables, uh, like the ribbon cable tucks under there so there's at least some buffer between this and the board. Not super ideal but it works for now and I'm going to try it out. A much easier option would be something like this. This is the B-Brain V2 canopy and this camera does fit in here with this lens. If you have the 7G glass lens that I replaced on here, then you can just friction fit, just push it right in here. It's super easy. In the future, I might upgrade this one with the HD Zero branded nano camera because it really does have a better picture quality. You can see I've got one of those in this toothpick build right here. It has a 14 by 16 millimeter backplate, and so I made a custom canopy for this one, and you can see it protects the lens and everything. If you're interested in this SDL file, I'll put a link to it down in the description along with everything else. First of all, it's not going to work at all in this Beta 65 Pro frame. This is designed for 35 millimeter props. You can also use 31 millimeter props and then you get a little bit more cushion around the outside and that's nice. But the way that they make these props bigger without increasing the total size is by pinching in the inside. And that is just going to be pinched in too much for this VTX. But if you had the regular non-pro version of the Meteor 65 frame, you could do it. It would still hit the ducts just a little bit, but you can see that I've already carved away just a little bit of the material here. So it could actually fit just like that. And from the front, it would look like that. So the video transmitter can definitely fit in this frame. The problem is there is not room under here for a flight controller. Even if you take the plugs off, I've tried it. There is just no room. To, to put one under here, you would have to remove this battery tray, and then you'd have to add rubber bands or something, that would be sloppy. And the battery tray is actually part of the rigidity of the frame because it connects across like that. So I didn't want to do that, this frame is out. Now here's a frame that actually could work. This frame is sold by several different companies, they rebrand it under different names. I've seen it called the Bwoop 65 frame and other names. You can recognize it by this battery tray that's on the bottom. And you can see that this flight controller does actually fit under here if and only if you rotate it 90 degrees. This is the back and this is the side. So if you put the USB on the side and you remove the motor plugs, then it could actually work. You can't have the USB over here because then it would block the battery tray. Unfortunately, that means you're gonna need a little bit longer battery connector going this way, but not too bad. So if you're wanting to follow along and make a build like this for yourself, this is at least a frame that you could use. Unfortunately, that Express LRS antenna is sticking up here again, and it is again gonna get in the way of the video transmitter. There's just not a lot of space between these two boards because the frame is not very thick this way. By the way, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have already put tiny holes on the underside of the frame here for mounting the flight controller. Those holes were not there originally, and I don't drill them out. I just take the screw and kind of force it in. The only thing that's tricky about that is getting it started without a pilot hole. So to create a pilot hole, I like to use forceps like this and a lighter, and I'll actually heat up the screw just a tiny bit. You don't want to melt a big hole, but if you heat it up a tiny bit and then touch it to the plastic, uh, the tip will sink in just enough to give you some bite and help you to screw it in from the backside. On the bottom, you can see how I've got the flight controller mounted in here. I am using silicon grommets to soft mount it. And these are typical whoop screws. 
uh, but it's the shorter variety. You wouldn't want to use really long screws because they might hit the screws that come down from the top, but that's working for me there. To save some weight, I did not use metal screws on the motor. These screws are made out of a material called Peak, although I usually recommend Rennie. Peak and Rennie are similar, but Rennie is cheaper, so I usually recommend Rennie screws for these and it works great. They almost never break because the frame provides enough protection for the motor. You can also see I've got the motors direct soldered onto the side. Even though plugs would fit in this frame, uh, direct soldering does save a little bit of weight as well. And I've got a nice short power lead that comes to a 180 degree connector. Well, that about wraps it up for this video, but I won't be able to release this video for a while because this 1S video transmitter hasn't even been announced yet. And when it is announced, it'll look different than this. Like I said, uh, it'll fit into the frame more easily. It'll be lighter and that's awesome. Uh, if you get one, you can probably build a whoop that's even lighter than mine. And I'd encourage you to try. If you do, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments or if you have any questions or suggestions for me, I'm pretty good at responding to those comments. So I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, thanks for watching to the end and I'll see you next time.